had a friend that was a friend of, of a guy named William Palmer. Well, Palmer was a painter, sculptor, and somehow he got to know Bat, and so he bought Bat up one day. I had some small carvings and stuff at that time, and he bought Bat up to my house, you know, so he could see what I was doing. Bat wasn't doing hardly anything much. He was painting mainly in black and white, and I remember one of the early things he did, he had this sort of outline of a head and an attack on, on the bottom of it, and uh, he, he was working small. Then eventually, I guess, he made a, a very quite large piece. I'm saying it's got to be at least uh, maybe three feet by four feet, something like that. And a friend of mine owns it now, and he called it Moonface. And then that was a free spirit in the sense that he only worked, he only did anything when he wanted to do it. He had very few ideas of he, that he had to do. He was compelled to do anything. So he worked when he wanted. And, the main thing, he believed in having fun. The, the, all these things uh, were very important to me because although our lifestyles were different, I always admired Bat. And we remained very close friends and when I went up to the hospital to see him, uh, we talked about old times and whatnot. Now there you can see a head here, and this is an abstract, a small abstract done with tiny nails. That got so, he also varied the texture by just using different sizes of tacks. It, if you, you can see, uh, tiny ones really, really tiny, but you can still see the chain mill effect of the uh, floating figure there. And, and of course the woman's uh, head there. This is a little different from what Bat did, because usually he did either something like this or a total like that, but this is a combination of both, of both ideas. He had a very sharp mind, very curious incident, and he could read poetry beautifully. Uh, people start calling him Dingbat because he, he dressed, you know, his outfits were always sort of outlandish, and he was never, he just wore what he liked to wear. He didn't care what other people's ideas you right. can see. <laughs> Him with his necklace on and his, his bandoleros and all that and these different coat cool rings and so people said, well, he's a dingbat. So they start calling him Dingbat Smith. Mm -hmm. Call, uh, uh, but he never and all his things, including the notes and stuff I have, uh, it, portraits, everything is signed Bat. Mm -hmm. Bat had a sense of humor. He didn't take a lot of things very seriously. He sort of laugh it off, and, and and but he never liked it. He never called himself being bad. He always said bad, you know. That makes sense. I admired him for his intellect, and and and, and I, I admired him for his imagination, and that's the main thing I like about art. If there, I'm not so much about what the message is, unless there's some real creativity to it, some aesthetics. And to me, if Bat was able to, uh, he had, had a vision, I think, that no one else did. And, and, and of course, uh, uh, he was such a free liver. Yeah.